Well, when it comes to shared universes, there have been mostly three. Uh, that being, of course, Marvel, uh, and then it's supposedly was supposed to be its main competitor, DC. Uh, they uh, Warner Brothers formed the DC EU, but those that never uh, could get off the ground uh, had some high points and then a bunch of failures, and it's all very sad. Uh, Marvel, after reaching uh, the, to the stratosphere, uh, then began uh, a, a massive decline <laughs> with one bad movie after another. All the while, there was the, the third shared universe, uh, the horror franchise known as The Conjuring. And uh, since horror movies... Uh, Typically, and uh, not all, sometimes some can be very expensive, but for the most part, they're rather cheap to do. And if you can maintain some amount of entertainment value in it, uh, even if you don't strike the big numbers, you don't lose money. You make money on those. And so that's the advantage that Conjuring has over uh, its superhero counterparts. So... Uh, the Conjuring, uh, uh, the whole franchise, uh, was interesting in a time, and I've always been rather grateful to it because it ended that nasty uh, uh, trend of torture porn. <laughs> just, just, you know, other than Saw 1, the rest of them are just no good. <laughs> but it was a, a bit of a, uh, a run there, and uh, fortunately, uh, I'm sure it's still being made here and there uh, but as far as being the main focus on the horror genre uh, films like Conjuring and there were others I mean uh, uh, Sinister, uh, Insidious uh, those uh, of a similar bit if you will uh, came along uh, and as far as shared universes go I believe Insidious and Sinister there were talks of crossing those over but it just you know uh, it, it, Sinister just it was a one and done thing really the second film is not all that great uh, but Conjuring uh, struck a chord uh, in a lot of ways uh, and uh, it, it, but and primarily it's all the same thing uh, what's the monster well it's demon possession you know and it's demons and all that and uh, th that seems to be the main focus uh, for a lot of, of films uh, in the horror genre um, you know rather than because every time there's like a, a haunted house or something, it's it's never actually a past spirit or anything. It's uh, it's demons, and of course, in the case of the Conjuring, they did have one where a a uh, a ghost of an old man was being manipulated and used by uh, demonic forces and that sort of thing. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the most part, loosely, extremely loosely, based on real events. <laughs> In the case of Ed and Lorraine Warren, who were uh, these, uh, well, demonologists, I suppose you call them, uh, devout Catholics who uh, investigated uh, paranormal activities at uh, people having trouble uh, and were supposed to help them out with uh, demonic uh, presence or, and or possession and that sort of thing. Uh, most notably, the uh, Amityville uh, incident, which became the, the, the inspiration for Amityville Horror. Uh, no doubt about it in my mind, there's no truth to that story whatsoever, uh, that there was anything uh, there. There's just too much evidence to the contrary, and uh, whatever involvement the Warrens had was uh, minimal at best, I would think. And of course, uh, they think, oh yes, there was definitely something there, and that sort of thing. Uh, but that's you have to kind of take that aside because some of this is I you're kind of running a scam in some of this and it is the, the amount of whether or not you choose to believe something or what have you and even if it turns out not to be true but you still believe it I may suppose you could put that in the case of those two but you know I wasn't there so you know uh, but in the case of the Amityville thing I don't think there's any truth to that but they they gained some amount of fame over this, and of course their collection of supposed, uh, you know, uh, rather haunted or demonic artifacts and whatnot, you know, the, the Annabelle doll, which is really a Raggedy Ann doll, but nevertheless, 
had you know rights. He had to change it for the purposes of the movie, and so on and so forth. All, you know, and that's what it's based on. I kind of wish they'd made up their own characters on that uh, and say, "Yeah, you're inspired uh, uh, by these real life people, but uh, you're kind of locked into things." But they didn't let that stop them. Uh, they went off into their own uh, narratives with the case of the nun. Uh, because the the original Nun film, that one is completely uh, their own creation. Uh, it's not really based on any, uh, any stories of uh, you know uh, people fighting demons or hauntings or what have you. Um, but in and of itself, it was interesting. Uh, obviously, the Nun character itself, or herself, or his self. I mean, it's a demon. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, it's very creepy uh, and, and scary looking and all of that and a very uh, interesting look and that's kind of the whole deal there I mean you've got this horror franchise in which in the, in the old days you know you'd have Jason or Freddy or something like that um, and, and now you have uh, these different versions of the demons um, that they uh, had they share that pretty similar with uh, in, in Insidious but uh the character uh, in and of itself had its own narrative displayed there and I kind of wondered because uh, they give a background story about these uh, crusading knights that defeated the demon and trapped it in this old church or, or, or uh, convent and, uh, and, and figured well that's that it's trapped and then that leads to what happens in the first movie so I kind of thought maybe a prequel was in order <laughs> goes into the realm of uh, like medieval lore and stuff like that uh i don't know depending on how long this thing goes uh maybe they could revisit it but instead they decided to just do uh, a full-on sequel which is not quite not exactly what i expected uh, because it's it's a pretty basic uh, one uh, and and thought because in the previous one they showed the connection of, of Valak to uh, Lorraine and, and all that and how she first encountered the entity and I thought that that's what what this setup was about uh, and eventually that's the case but here because uh, you the movie ended with uh, the guy who helped out uh, Sister Irene uh, he he was possessed. By the, the 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 demon at the end of the film, and it's like so, oh. But with the scenes that went back to the Ed and Lorraine scenes, I thought, oh, so that's how the demon ends up you know, in their lives and stuff, because it's still around. You know, it just took possession of this guy, and <laughs> so it still escaped. You know, <laughs> just not in full form, I guess. What was the supposed victory there? But uh, so. No, we're going to catch up with uh, Maurice, the poor guy who was helping out Sister Irene and gets himself possessed. Uh, he's unaware of this, but he's been going around uh, transporting the demon, committing murders of uh, uh, priests and nuns. <laughs> and so Irene is brought back in. Uh, it, it, she doesn't want to because after what she went through, but they're like, hey, you're the one with the experience. you got to do it. So she does. And uh, and then that's about it, really. A uh, bunch of they go to this uh, Catholic uh, girl for schools, uh, girl, <laughs> schools for girls, <laughs> and uh, you had the shenanigans there. Uh, there's this uh, girl being bullied by the mean girls and that sort of thing, and she has a friendship with Maurice, who's basically sort of the uh, the handyman around uh, and all of that. And he's got this flirtation with one of the, the teachers. And the girl, I guess, is kind of making, uh, wanting to be kind of matchmaker between them, is seeing them as, uh, I don't know, the parents she doesn't have, I guess, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's a sweet little story there, but oh, there's a catch. Yeah, he's possessed by a demon. So, uh, meanwhile, uh, Irene has this reluctant nun who becomes her uh, companion uh, for this little adventure. And, uh, of course, the the, the younger uh, nun, she you know regains her faith through all of this adventure and, and stuff like that, and uh, the rest is well, it's very dark and uh, oh, there's bumps in there, and it slowly it gets worse and worse. Th at some point, it's like the whole plot uh, revolved around uh, uh, 
uh, well, uh, St. Uh, Lucy, which was uh, the story of a woman who uh, was blinded before her execution. Uh, in this story, they said she was set afire, but she didn't burn, so they blinded her uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, the eyes of St. Lucy still exist, apparently, uh, in this relic. So there's this relic you got to get to that Valak wants believing that Valak can restore its power from the days when it when it was an angel before it was a fallen angel and becoming a demon and all this sort of thing. And uh, that's that's the deal. Uh, and it's buried at this school somewhere. So it, it, at least it's complete because there was all these murders going on uh, with these priests and nuns and what have you. And say, hey, well, what's it doing that for? Well, they were connected for it to find where the... Uh, the this relic is and so that's the whole deal and they get to it and then the connection of of the other characters especially between irene and uh lorraine uh which plays on the idea that the actresses playing the two characters are sisters in real life <laughs> and actually uh the girl uh, cast and said well she did so well but then they realized it's like oh she's what's her face his sister i don't know that we can uh, they, they went, with, but they liked her, you know. And at first, when I f saw the scenes for the nun, uh, pr promos and stuff, I thought, oh, was was Lorraine, did she try out to be a nun and decided it wasn't for her or whatever? And it was that the backstory? Uh, you know, no, no real connection at all. <laughs> uh, because this is a completely fictional uh, uh, character. But the idea of St. Lucy is suggested here that there is this lineage between the two characters uh, because they're like distant cousins of this uh, of this saint and uh, so there that's the deal and why uh, they're so much more I guess powerful against the forces of evil and that uh, they can see things that others cannot and so there there you go so it's a bit of a complete uh, story and explanation of the workings of their little horror universe that they've made here and of course the, the, they're triumphant but the the failing <laughs> and they, maybe not I mean I suppose you could say that the demon was just wrong and that the demon gets the eyes you know and then seemingly is all-powerful but the power that they was demonstrating seemed to be the same amount of power that it already demonstrated I mean uh, uh, the teacher and the rest of the girls are being chased by I don't know the demons dog <laughs> <laughs> some monster that you never quite see uh and that sort of thing it's just like well the demon seems pretty powerful already and i guess it was uh tormenting those girls to keep them at bay so they couldn't help uh sister irene and, and the others i you know, i don't know but it, it's like well it didn't really work out so you have to conclude the demon was wrong in thinking that it would be unstoppable once it had uh the, the relic in its possession uh, but all the, the two nuns, uh, they pray, and uh, it turns out where the final uh, battle takes place, uh, they're surrounded by barrels of, of the wine, which would be used in the Eucharist, and so the, the barrels open up and douse uh, the nun. And, uh, well, she, she bursts into flames like a vampire in the sun. So <laughs> that's it for you, and uh, seems like uh, Maurice... Uh, is saved and he's okay he had saved irene in the previous movie now she saved him and so they think hey you know we're even <laughs> and it looks like he's gonna live happily ever after with the teacher and uh, the little girl uh, who uh, you know wants them to be her her new mommy and daddy i guess you know so anyway uh and of course the uh, the end credit scene is to show that yes this does go back to uh, Lorraine and Ed and Lorraine, and uh, they're supposed to be another conjuring. So, I guess to be continued as always with this uh, for the connections of these movies. However, even though it does have a complete narrative here uh, for its storytelling, uh, the main, you know attraction to these movies is basically the same tricks but now they're rather, they're rather played out and old uh, it's it's dark you hear noises it gets worse uh, the, the thing jumps out at you you run and hide screaming or it gets somebody 
and then some you know uh, well through faith love and strength you know you you overcome it and the end uh, you, you, there's not a whole lot more uh, there uh, so it, I mean I, I I assume it has its fandom I don't know how well this movie uh, will do but it I don't see it as bad I just see it as played out and probably unnecessary uh, to where they probably should be looking for a conjuring film that pretty much ends the franchise because I think it's run its course uh, I, I've liked most of them, some of them not, less than others, uh, but a lot of it, the chief problem is, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, and you know, and kind of the, one of the problems, if not, you know, well, I wouldn't say it was the biggest problem for the superhero movies, but it is a problem they have, where they don't really have any more ideas about what to do with them, and uh, that's kind of what happens here. Like I said, maybe just branching off into like medieval lore and stuff, <laughs> which would have been more like a, you know, a sword and sorcery <laughs> movie. Uh, maybe they should have done that, you know, uh, telling the early days of the uh, the Valak demon and all that. Uh, other than that, I you know, I, I, I don't know that there's any other new angles or takes that they could do to make it to to refresh it uh, to justify continuing on. So uh, it, it's a strange thing because it's like the movie doesn't bother me, doesn't really piss me off or anything like that. Or like, oh, you trashed the whole thing. It doesn't do any of that. Uh, and it's not that bad, but it's just more of the same. Yeah. So that's unfortunate, but uh, there really wasn't any new idea here. And so there you go. Anyway, uh, that's The Nun 2. Um and of course, I guess you'd have to go see how you can watch chronologically all the movies to get the story right, because you know, they're jumping around through time and all that. Uh, but then again, I mean, it looks like, wow, they, they pretty much did the nun in, and yet uh, the nun appears again later. You know, I was like, ah, jeez. So it's kind of like, well, when Lorraine finally gets rid of the nun, but then, then again, she did discover the name of the demon. Apparently that's the rules, you know, you, you discover the name of the demon, and then you have power over him and that sort of thing. So maybe that's, that was the true final end of The Nun back then. But um, then we went back in the past to see some other nasty shenanigans it was up to. Uh, such was the case for The Nun 2.